So after all the layout, all the cutting, the math, etc., etc., now it's time to start framing the ceiling. Now you can see why I skinned the inside of that tray with a 2x4. And even though those rafters don't plane out perfectly, it's okay. The drywall is going to float that. With all this cutting, I never get it exactly on the money, and that's okay. I definitely didn't want it to project into the room. So projecting a little in on that 2x4 is not a big deal. When you go to install these hips, don't panic if at first those cuts don't look perfect. It just takes a little bit of tweaking. Trust the math. If you did a good job cutting, it's gonna fit well. This edge to be good. I want this edge to be good. And you can see that's open, but I'll take care of that in a second. Also, do not shoot your fingers. This gun's pretty slick. You can actually shoot a little closer to your fingers. You just have to walk with the nails themselves, but it won't bounce fire or double fire. Uh, there's a, the way that that trigger set up is when you shoot once, you pull the trigger first, only allow you to shoot one nail. So even if you bounced over and hit your hand, it would not drive another nail. So there's the ceiling. I always like to install all of the rafters first and then fill in the ceiling. Again, trust the math. It goes pretty quick. Looks pretty cool. And because of the roof, I'm gonna have to rip that guy. Same thing here, because of these rafters. I also always cut a few extra rafters, because once you've taken this much out of two by 12, if it's cracked or it falls off like it did there off the ladder, then you've got a backup that breaks. So that's how the ceiling looks before it gets skinned. Uh, we put it this way for the drywallers. Okay, so what we did is we picked one of the ribs, drew a line on it. That was our reference to measure both ways. Kyle's got a line drawn here. And then Shane and I just read off measurements. Then all he had to do is connect the dots. You probably see this side a little bit better. You know the irony is, both of these guys have horrible gingivitis because they don't actually floss. So we do the one by four like a barrel because it's a little easier to lay out and install. And one by four is three quarters of an inch thick. So it gives a ton of backing for the drywallers. You can see the way that we did our layout. Those cuts are pretty decent, but again, this is rough framing. So that hits the taper's job to make it look perfect. As framers, we're just installing backing and making it pretty good. The flat spot up there, as you can see there, we went ahead and sheeted it with the two bottom pieces of Advantech we had left over from the floor. They're always a little gnarly, and that provided a ton of backing for these guys. So these drywallers decided instead of double layer or quarter inch, they used half inch rock, and they wetted one side. So if you wet the side that goes against the framing, it makes it easier to bend that arch. And then they just put a lot of screws into it. Now it's up to the taper to do a good job making it finish out well. This is just that sag resistant half inch rock. That's what they use on the lid everywhere. And here's the finished ceiling. Staged, house is on the market, ready to sell. Gives just a little bit of drama to that ceiling. Since we hand cut our roofs, we always have the extra attic space. So all told, this took me about a day to frame. If I wasn't recording it for YouTube, probably half a day. Hope you enjoyed parts one through four. Please like and subscribe.